It's pretty often that I end up reviewing something that reminds people of something else, for one reason or another. While it can be a fairly annoying practice and slightly hypocritical of people to call me out on mentioning similar titles when reviewing a similar one, if they're just going to turn around and do the same thing in the comments, but at least I've managed to discover a few interesting titles that I might not have heard of through this phenomenon. What I'm getting at? Okay, fine. Right around the time I was reviewing MechWarrior Online, this game was released into a closed beta, and of course, people were already debating the merits of this game over that one. Luckily, I've played this game at the suggestion of a few other people, and what I found I tended to enjoy, but they are unquestionably different beasts. So what happens when you take the slow, methodical strategy out of a game like MechWarrior Online and insert more fast-paced shooting mechanics? Well, Mech Assault, but that's not what I'm looking at. This is the MMO Grinder, and it's time to look at Hawken. Published by Meteor Games and developed by Adhesive Entertainment, Hawken is a mech-based first-person shooter released to an open beta in December of 2012. It received a lot of excitement and glowing praise, even as far back as an alpha, receiving many of Best Of awards from trade shows and turning up on people's top 10 lists as the best game ever, but yeah, that kind of fervor went away pretty fast. It's not a slight on this game, but it's definitely a testament to the genre and the mentality of the average MMO gamer. New equals best. So if you wanted a faster pace out of MechWarrior Online, or something more akin to a modern FPS game, stay tuned and we'll get started. There's a very obvious industrial aesthetic to this game. It's all metallic with little to nothing left of nature to behold, all maps taking place in a mass of industrial buildings haphazardly stuck on top of one another. It's a massive twist of metal, and if you prefer a variety of colors, you're not going to find much of them in this game. The same goes for the mechs themselves, looking like a mishmash of parts with what seems to be no overall sense of unity to their look. They look far more like Frankensteinian metal monstrosities than the mechs in NWO would look. The overtly industrial look is even more compounded by the gritty style of the game, especially your view inside the mech. With what looks like a dirty windshield, black splotches abound, and the view is coated in this odd filter that looks as if you're looking through a lower resolution camera. However, for some reason, this really works for me. It gives me this odd disconnect that I'm actually in the giant robot, not that I am the giant robot. It's unquestionably hard to get used to, but after a few matches, it becomes a bit more immersive and really fits with the overall aesthetic. The world is bleak and over-industrialized, and that is captured beautifully in all this purposeful ugliness. There are very few tracks in this game. It's a weird mesh of piano and industrial techno, but they aren't much heard in the game beyond a track that plays on the menu. Currently, no music plays in the matches at all, so once again, I'll be doing as I did in the Mech Warrior review, putting in one of the few tracks on occasion while letting the background noise take charge for the most part. I hope this isn't going to pose too much of a problem, because, well, it's a pretty loud game. Your mech is loud, the other mechs are loud, the firing of your weapons is loud, the siren that goes off when a base is under attack or all points are being captured by the enemy is loud. You can hear the loudness right now, can't you? Again, it's all purposeful of the action and the aesthetic, but you'll be definitely reaching for the volume slider if you're playing in a public room or near people disturbed by loud noises. It's rough and brutal and immersive, but it's loud, unquestionably. Just prepare yourself for that. When you start out, you have one mech at your disposal, and the option to enter a training mode. The mode walks you through the game's controls, the dash mechanic, the healing mechanic, usage of your items and secondary powers, and ends with you being able to fight against a ton of constantly respawning bot mechs, while your mech remains undestroyable. When you feel comfortable with how the game controls, enter the elevator to be taken to the regular game. The controls are pretty standard for an FPS. WASD controls walking movement, and you can move in any direction pretty much any time, much unlike MWO's throttle and steering system and more akin to a regular FPS game. You can look around with a mouse which you also aim with. The movement is still far more clunky considering you're inside a giant robot and all. You can, however, boost using the shift key allowing you to rocket thrust forward or quickly dash to the side, which is a pretty useful mechanic for rendering incoming missiles useless. You can press space to jump and hold down space to fire a jump jet, which will allow you to hover for a short period of time. Dodging, using thrusters, or your jump jets all will use up fuel that recharges quickly when they're not in use. You have two weapons at your disposal, a primary and a secondary, linked to left and right click respectively. 
Primary weapons are usually low cooldown spammable attacks like machine guns or small missile launchers, while secondary weapons are much more powerful and take far longer to recharge. Some secondary weapons have augmented abilities as well, like the tow missile standard on the starter mech can be exploded early with a second press of right click. The Rocketeer's Hellfire missiles can lock onto a target if you first hit middle click. Firing weapons non-stop will cause your mech to overheat, as it would in MWO, but it's a far more forgiving system, as your mech doesn't explode when it overheats as much as it just shuts down for a short period of time. The Recruit mech even has a secondary function that allows you to completely remove all the heat gathered by your weapons with this fairly decent cooldown. Speaking of secondary abilities, each mech has one and it's activated by pressing F. Some can boost their damage, others can convert into heavily armored but slow moving turret forms. You also have access to two items which also have their own cooldown, activated with R, such as a deployable turret or a defensive bubble shield. You can change between your equipped item with the mouse wheel. G and H are reserved as taunt buttons, with G being an animated mech taunt, like your mech taking a bow, and H being a purchasable hollow taunt, brought in charges with in-game credits, which will display an image in front of your mech. You can heal any damage you've taken by holding down the C button, which will disable your mech, zoom the camera out to third person, and deploy a robot that will slowly repair your mech. You are extremely vulnerable in this mode, and it takes a short while to enter and exit it, so be certain you can hide well enough before using it or you'll be easy pickings for the enemy. Unlike MWO, death is a minor setback, and you'll respawn almost instantly depending on what game mode you're playing. When killed, you'll be taken back to your garage screen, allowing you to switch mechs if you so desire, and head back into the fray at any time with the launch button. A major mechanic of the game you might not immediately think about is the radar signature. In the upper right corner, you get a vague map and radar location of enemy and friendly mechs. Enemies appear as red dots, but there's a twist in that you can't always see an enemy mech on the screen. However, performing actions such as boosting or firing weapons increases your radar signature and allows you to become more detectable. While you might feel it's your best to soar across the map to enter the fray, you're leaving a massive trail that enemy players on the hunt for lone bots can see before you ever know they're there. This can also be used strategically to your advantage. Imagine seeing only one enemy bot on your radar, only to enter the area and have four more show up from seemingly out of nowhere, all because they use the first bot's radar signature to lure you into a trap. It's a mechanic most people won't notice immediately, but it definitely has its strength and advantages when utilized. I still don't know why I keep thinking that FPS games are so easy to explain the mechanics of. It always takes me so much longer than I think. There are four game modes. Well, three and a half if you want to get technical. Team Deathmatch, Missile Assault, Siege, and Deathmatch. At first all you have is Team Deathmatch, a self-explanatory firefight with one side against another, battling it out until a kill total is reached or the timer of the match has expired. After a few matches you'll unlock Missile Assault, which is pretty much point capture and hold. Three missile towers are constantly firing upon the enemy team's base if they're under your team's control, and vice versa. Whichever team's base is destroyed first, loses. While Deathmatch and Siege are unlocked at the same time, after a few more matches in any previously unlocked mode, I'm not going to focus on Deathmatch because it's Deathmatch, the same as Team Deathmatch except you're not on team. Siege, on the other hand, ooh, where do I begin? This is pretty much the mode that made the game for me. It's not like any other mode I've played in an FPS, but I'm certain someone's going to find something to compare it to, so I await those comments. In Siege, your goals change depending on the phase of the match you're on. As you start out, both teams are near their base's starting point. Phase 1 acts slightly like a point capture, where both teams need to race to two energy points that have spawned on the map. Once you're within range of the point, you collect energy gradually, filling up your tanks until you reach a max of 200 or leave the point. If you are killed while holding onto any energy, all the energy you were holding is completely lost. To keep things interesting, and not just so people all assign one point to their team, the more people siphoning energy from the same point, the slower each person gains energy, so it might serve better to actually assign a few to be gathering while the rest assault or defend the point, trading off when it's safe and when a team member gets their fill. Once the tanks are filled, or you decide you have enough energy and don't want to risk losing it, you head back into your base and offload your stored energy, fueling your battleship. Once all the required energy is offloaded onto your battleship, the ship launches and slowly heads towards the enemy base. This marks the start of Phase 2. When any battleship is launched, your teams or the enemies, the team with the airborne ship can no longer gather energy, and an anti-air missile turret will open in the center of the map. At this point, both teams can vie for control of the turret, which the current controlling team will cause the turret to fire on the enemy ship. All the while, the ship, or ships, will be firing upon the enemy team. You can choose to hold on to this point, or target the turrets and engine on the enemy ship with your mech in order to damage or destroy it before it reaches your base. Once a ship reaches the opposing base, it starts to fire upon it until the ship, or the base, is destroyed and the process begins anew. 
These matches go on for a long time, but they are unquestionably more fun and intense matches to play. Changing up their gameplay style constantly, and a well-coordinated team can completely dominate this mode. It's a lot of fun and worth playing the previous matches just to unlock and try it out for yourself. Your character or pilot does not have any set levels, instead all levels are granted to the mech you're piloting, meaning you might tear apart your competition in a level 9 mech, but as soon as you unlock a new mech, you're starting it out on level 1. Levels are important to your mech as you can place points to optimize your mech on each level. With three trees that augment your offense, like boosting your weapon damage, defensive, like taking less damage or speeding up your healing, or mobility, which lessens your fuel usage or increases your speed. You can also tweak your mech's abilities, giving them a different primary weapon or combat items, both offensive and defensive, and passive items that boost one aspect of your mech's abilities at the sacrifice of another. You can find these in the mech store, which I'll eventually cover in the cash shop. Now, don't be too hasty to go out and get a brand new mech. Your starter mech, despite looking like a bipedal easy-bake oven, is one of the best mechs in the game. Why? It's got no major weaknesses or strengths. It's the perfect jack-of-all-trades mech. It's not overly damaging, but it will tear you down in a fight. It's not the most unstoppable mech, but it takes a good bit of fire before it goes down. It's not the fastest mech available, but it has no problem getting in and out of fights when it needs to. This is the perfect evening of the playfield, and while you might be tempted to laugh at the guy still driving the noob tube, you won't be laughing when they climb the scoreboard, as they are only limited by their skill, not their mech itself. Trust me on that one. These are a decent, albeit often quiet, group of people. Not too much chatting is going on in the matches, but the game does have the potential to invite the FPS community, and that's its own breed of people. I've seen occasional complaining, usually coming from only one person, and of course there's the occasional argument between players, and then of course there is the most often seen horrible, stupid, or offensive name. There's still not much talking going on though, thankfully and understandably. You know, when I played this a long while back, I was actually recognized in the middle of the match. That is never not going to be terrifying. Despite the availability of an integrated in-game voice chat defaulted to a push-to-talk system, it's not very often used, but don't be surprised if you suddenly hear talking in the middle of a match. If you're looking to play alongside your friends in the game, just add them to your friends list via their in-game names. If you want to join up with them forming parties ready to take on a match, you can't. In fact, the only way for a friend to join you, or for you to join a friend, is to have one of you join a match, and have your friends choose the Join Server option that will show up next to your name in the friends list. It's pretty easy to go this game alone as it is with friends, as there's really no need to join up with others to get a good experience. There's a few options to purchase in the cash shop with the paid currency called Meteor Credits. The shop consists of mostly three things, cosmetic niceties, alternate mechs, and alternate equipment. Don't sweat the idea of this being pay to win, as despite you having the option to use your cash points to purchase upgrades and mechs, all of these can be earned with in-game credits, and you'll earn them pretty quickly. Not to mention, buying a new mech will start that mech over at level 1, and they won't immediately be outfitted like your recruit mech would, and some require you to reach certain levels before they become as useful. There's quite a few types of mech, like slow-moving defender types like the Rocketeer and the Brawler, close range and damaging mechs like the Raider, mid range assault mechs, and long range sharpshooters. Read over what each mech does and how it works in order to best understand its role in combat. There's also a chance that a certain mech will be available as a free trial, allowing you to use it in matches at level 1 only. While you can gain experience on the mech, you can't upgrade it until you've unlocked it. If the mech trial expires, you lose the ability to use that mech in battle unless you unlock it. And if you do unlock it, you'll keep whatever experience you've earned on it. The only things that can only be purchased with money are the cosmetic items, like the ability to change the look of your mech, so you can make it so that your recruit mech no longer looks like a walking television set. Speaking of this glaringly obvious fact, the developers are quite in on the joke. Take a close look at the official name of the mech. N no, Taco Bell Grande is what I named it. Don't ask me why. Under that. There. The CRT Recruit Mech. This game is filled with name puns like this, and you'll probably end up missing them if you don't look for them. The most obvious are the alternate repair bots you can purchase. The default one that fires out a barrage of three lasers is called the RDTR-1. The one that fires a focused beam of red light is the RDLZR. The bot that hoses down your mech with a spray of water? The RDH-20. If I have to explain that to you, please tell me I don't have to explain these to you.
For a fun, simple game with a mech premise, Hawken delivers, but it's unquestionably not the heavily involving and customizable sim that MechWarrior Online delivers. And beyond the mech aspect, these games simply should not be compared to each other. Each offers a completely separate experience, so if you're looking for something easy, simple, and fun in a starter mech that isn't the walking pile of volatile explosives, give Hawken a whirl. Here's my final rating. This is a fun, simple FPS that people might refer to as a Twitch shooter. You're constantly spinning the camera around looking for your next target, and the action is constant and brutal, not giving too much time for any overly complex strategy. If you're a fan of the mech combat aesthetic and combined with a simple FPS gameplay, you might really enjoy this game. It's very easy to learn and play, allowing those with at least slight familiarity with the FPS mechanics to hop in and out with ease. There's little reason you'd need to pay for this game as far as personal advancement, so if you just wish to support the developers, it's probably best just to buy the cosmetic parts to spruce up your mech to your tastes, and leave the in-game credits to picking up new mechs and armaments, considering they are pretty easy to earn. I consider it kinda shallow to dislike things for an aesthetic, but I fully understand why people wouldn't be running to this game. While I do feel this game represents what it's aiming to do beautifully, it's also admittedly a pretty depressing world, and has a serious lack of variety in the environments. Some people might just not like the look of it, period. Of course, if you're not a fan of FPS games, there's nothing overtly different about Hawken that would probably bring you on board. It's certainly not comparable to Tribes Ascend or Call of Duty, but the core is the same and the genre is the same. Point, shoot, make things die. Of course, if you've always preferred your mech combat to be slow, strategic, and complex, Hawken is not a single one of these things, and your attention is best directed to MechWarrior Online if you aren't looking to just jump in and out of matches for a quick explosion fix. Next time, I'll be looking at a game that, up until recently, I didn't think anybody wanted me to look at. Behold the power of marketing, I suppose.